Jonah Matthews, welcome to the podcast, Connect with KT. Um, I think in order to fully explain our friendship, we need to start at the beginning. And I don't know if you remember, but the night that we met was actually my freshman year um, fall USC athlete invite. Oh, and for sure. I remember the reason that, so I was basically, basically for all those out there who don't know, athlete invite. Before, USC, before we go into this, I'm going to be the first person to wish you happy birthday, though. Oh, thank first. you. Thank you, Jonah. I appreciate I'm, with, that. I'm the first person. <laughs> You are, right? two days, like, I'm, yeah. I'm oh my god I, re- I really appreciate that I'm gonna say um, my birthday is on Monday by the time that this podcast is out it will have already passed but I appreciate you being the first person to wish me happy birthday you know I had to um all right so basically athlete invite is a night in the fall one in the fall one in the spring where all USC athletes just like link up go hang out at some like closed off location and it's just a good time you get to meet other athletes hang out so basically you go there in buses and I was a young freshman, didn't know too many other athletes. <laughs> I step on the bus and like, I'm like the first of my teammates to get on. I just look in the back and there's this group led by Jonah and they're just vibing. <laughs> I was like, I was like, they look like so much fun. It was, it was I think it was like me, Nick, Harrison, um, DeAnthony. Yeah, I think it was like all our freshmen. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, it was, it was the OG squad. It was like the original, like, like USC basketball squad. Gosh. Those like guys. it was like Benny, like it was like it was everybody. Yeah, even even like Derek went too. Like yeah, he went yeah. Just transferred. Yeah. yeah, crazy. So, anyways, I go back there and then we we like took a picture that night, whatever fun night. And then I remember that spring, I asked you to do that, or you, I asked you if I could film a hype video for you, and it was that one that we filmed in Galen. And then yeah. I made a vlog out of it, and then we just like vibed and we were like hanging out. And then I get to class in the first day of classes in the fall. <laughs> And I get to my analytical communications class and I see Jonah Matthews right there. So I was like, oh God, we're in for a treat this semester. Wow, that was the worst <laughs> class of all time. So, okay, one thing I wanted to get into that class. Um, I remember we literally, you had, so we mobbed that whole semester. Like we were in the group together. It was like probably the hardest class I've ever taken in my entire life at any level. Actually. And I remember we were like studying for the final, like we had, were doing those T-tests. like. And then, <laughs> and then, so basically, I remember the day that you, we had our final, it was like at 11 a.m. And then you had a game that night at seven. Oh, so yeah. we were literally like, it was like seven in the morning. We're up like in Galen or in uh, McKay, like grinding for that test, like running over our T-test. And then I remember you literally left and you were like, all right, I got to go. Like, and you were playing in Staples that night. Right, yeah. And so I guess my first question would be like, uh, was there any point where it was like extremely difficult to do basketball and school? Because it, it kind of dabbled into both semesters. Like I know as a lacrosse player, I could schedule like my easier classes for the fall and then like, or my easier classes for the spring. So that way I'm in season for the easy stuff. And then the fall would be more like heavy duty, but you're kind of like all year. So was that like, what was that like? Uh, yeah, I would say like on that example too, I have a couple more, like when I was a sophomore, uh, we were at Arizona and I had a midterm the day of the game. We played at six, I had to take a midterm at 10. So like we were on the flight, I'd like study on the flight and it just it just didn't go like I, we had practice and at that night I was tired. Yeah. I couldn't, so I'd say like it definitely for basketball it definitely dabbles in like to both. Like you have hard classes both semesters and it's gonna it's gonna conflict either way both semesters. So I'd say like it's easier in the fall because you have that break. But like in the spring it's January to March and you're or May yeah. and you're on the road half that time. And that's the heat of it because it's like Pac-12 and if you make the tournament like you're you're traveling a lot. Yeah, but like also like they do a good job. Like I can't lie, we went to the tournament my freshman year. Yeah. They um they brought like tutors. Like we had Heather Bell, Kevin Ball, and Marisa. Like we had all them travel yeah. with us. Like so we had like and th- during those like practice days in the tournament, you don't practice for days. You practice for like thirty minutes and you're done. Yeah. So, like, the rest of the yeah. day you can yeah. like, study and stuff. So at that yeah. point it's easier. But during practice, all of it's it's hectic. Yeah, that like I feel like you're just like getting shots up and like getting comfortable with like the court and stuff like that Honestly. at that point. Um. All right. So. Another thing about that semester is obviously we were vibing and we had class together. So then when I wanted to do my KT verse series, you were the first person I reached out to. And that blew up. Yeah, that blew up. I remember that night. It, it was like up. it was like nine o'clock on like a Tuesday and I had Kerrigan come with me and like we were like, Where is Jonah? And then all of a sudden you pull up and you're blasting Jordan Usher's mixtape out of your <laughs> out of your speaker. So oh, man. <laughs> so wow. yeah, wow. Talk about a throwback there. So that night we vibed video was great and I just I remember you were so comfortable on camera like right away and a lot of people aren't like a lot of athletes that I filmed with are just like people in general like get weird around the camera and like you you were like the same person if not even more outgoing so like 
how I guess did you get so comfortable? I mean, especially with like media and stuff like that when you were mm -hmm. at USC. Uh, like it happened like way before USC. To be honest, like when I played in the Nike circuit, when I was like in high school, like EYBO. Yeah. If you have like a game, like they're gonna interview you after like the D one circuit. They'll put you on there. So like, as more and more interviews I got, like even when I was a freshman here at USC, like I just got more comfortable and more comfortable. But like, what really helped me, honestly, like was I took this public speaking class with yeah. Harrison and Nick and D'Anthony. Oh, my God. Like, class, like, freshman year. And you had to literally go up there and, like, just speak five yeah. minutes, like, no note card, no, like, <laughs> like, give a speech on something. Like, that really breaks the ice. Like, I, that really broke me. I was like, okay, like, I can do this for anybody. Like, yeah. these random kids I've never met before. Like, and in front of my teammates, like, after that, I was like, okay, I can do it. But yeah. and on the athlete side of things, like, you're talking about the game you just played, so you know. Like what's the yeah. an answer like you didn't yeah. you know be comfortable and like especially like, like you like you're outgoing too so it was so like easy to vibe yeah and I feel like people don't realize like I took the public speaking class too this last semester and I feel like people don't realize that like you could literally win like an NBA finals game and like that interview would be easier than like giving a public speaking speech like, like it's like like when you don't like, know the people yeah like when you don't like, know the people it's harder that class I like, literally you just get called like a random and like the one need to go over you have to go over seven minutes like to reach that dead mark like it's hard it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you mentioned like the Nike circuit playing at a high level, like early on, um, you were an ESPN top 150 recruit, everything like you, you were up. So um, at what point, I guess like to play four years of college basketball and like to have NBA hopes, like which we'll talk about in a minute, but to get to like the level that you're at, you need to have kind of like a killer mentality, I guess you could say. So at what point did you realize that you were like ultra competitive and that you wanted to play basketball at a high level? Well, I got to, like, my freshman year of high school. Like, me and my brother are on the same team. Like, my brother, I always, like, looked at my brother, like, as, as like, a Kobe Bryant type. Like, yeah. that's my idol. So, I yeah. saw him. Like, we were on the same team for our freshman year. I see the way he would just, like, kill people. Like, kill and just be super competitive. So, like, my freshman year, like, really started. But then when I when he left and, like, I had to learn to, like, will the team and win. Like, actually, like, learn that we need to be, like, a captain and stuff like that. That's how I really, like, started, like, get competitive and just, like, really took over. Because you want to win, like the like the fire of winning, like really lights up inside me. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, so I'll like going along with that fire. Like you've you've told me that you've gotten to work out with like a lot of cool players. Like you've worked out with Kawhi, you worked out with Kobe, and like you've told me individual little tidbits and stories about like each of those guys and like what makes them tick, kind of. And you told me like one story about Kobe, how like he would just literally relentlessly go for like six hours, like it's insane. Yeah. So I guess what like. Who was your favorite player that you worked out with? And, like, of those players, like, who did you look up to the most and, like, still look up to the most? Um, I would say, that like, recently, like, I can't really go with Kobe. Like, he was back in the day. I was young. But, like, recently, yeah. like, I would say in my college career, Devin Booker is really, like, I took a lot of offensive skills from him. Like, he he plays for the Suns, even though they don't win that much. But still, they just – he really, like, his offensive mentality is different. Like, he comes down, like, you can miss 10, but the next 10 are going in. So, like, yeah. that's how I worked out with him this past summer. It was just cool to see how he worked and, like, what I should work on. He said, what time to get better on, stuff like that. And, like, seeing dudes like D. Rose inside working at USC, like, they'll talk to us. Like, yeah. so it's just even DeMar will come back. Oh, Nick Young will work out in there. So, seeing all those guys and just getting information from them, like, really helped me. Yeah, I think that's the crazy thing about USC is, like, since we are right in the middle of L.A. and, like, I remember one time I met Zach Efron because basically like these celebrities just don't want to go to a gym. So they're like, all right, I'll go work out at SC. And like, I remember one time I was like in class and I saw um, a, an Instagram story that like James Harden was like up in the top courts at Galen. Like they just work out there. All right. So you mentioned like working out with a lot of those guys and like your brother was like a role model. So you went to high school right down the road from SC in uh, Santa Monica, Samo represent. So what was your high school experience like um, in terms of basketball and just like high school in general? Honestly, like, Santa Monica High School is, like, probably the best high school in the world. Like, no, actually, like, the people I met there is, like, so diverse. Like, they come from, like, everywhere. It's, like, Venice, Malibu, Palisades. Like, yeah. everybody comes from different places. So, it was fun. But, like, on the basketball side, like, watching my brother and, like, getting, go, like, winning CIF that year and going to the state championship, like, that really, like, helped me. Like, the last two years, I always told myself I'll win two high school championships. So, like, we yeah. won my freshman year. And my, my sophomore year, I, like, had to take over, but I didn't really know yet. My junior year, we were okay. My senior year, we went, like, 30-2. and two, And, like, I won another CIF championship. And, like, we lost the first round. But it was just, like, that really preparing for SC. Like, just taking over and knowing how to, like, win a team to win. Like, know what it takes to win. Yeah. So, well, I guess, like, yeah, you, you said, like, obviously USC was kind of an easy choice, I would imagine, in recruiting because it was, like, right down the road. And, like, mm -hmm. um, so how different was college ball from high school ball? Like, obviously, you had, like, the mentality and, like, you had the skill set. But, like, 
you came in right away and made an impact. And like, obviously that's kind of a bigger thing within college athletics, but like a field or within college basketball, but a team like USC has like always has a lot of upperclassmen. So like, what was it do you think for you that allowed you to step right in as a freshman and just like go right ahead? Like when I finished my high school career, like, like two days after I started working at this place called Exos and like, uh, it's like um, in Carson at the Home Depot Center. Yeah. I was there. So like, it was, it was like weight training, like agility, like flexibility, like we would do like yoga every day, like bands. And I think that really helped me like get stronger. I was like 165 going like when I left my high school and then like I came to SC, I was like 180. Like that yeah. really helped me like, put on weight because when you get to college and the game is faster, you're not playing versus like high school seniors. These are like grown men, like they could like potentially like, 24, <laughs> yeah. like 18. So like yeah. that was like the strength and like the quickness and like pace of the game was like the first shot. But like, yeah. I think if I didn't do that stuff, like before I'd have been way, I would have been way set back. Yeah, for sure. I think like, I mean, for me, like I would work some of your games and I'd be down there for warmups and like, these dudes are huge. Like, it's like not a game. Like right. they're, they're massive men. Like, <laughs> like you, like you watch some of these teams warm up and like the dudes are like jumping right up and like, just like putting the ball in like to the rim. I'm like, this is just insane. Like, like there, there's some dudes like I remember my freshman year, I was, we played in a tournament. I was six three like 175 by the point because we shimmed down for like playing weight and then I was guarding a senior six seven two thirty like <laughs> like, yeah. like there's nothing you can't prepare for that but like no. like it's, it's just it's just crazy how like you go from like high school the, the biggest GOC is like okay he's like not going to be strong like that so you can cope yeah. like in college you can guard the biggest dude and be the smallest dude you never know yeah exactly um all right so the USC team you've been on four and obviously your freshman year was like a special year for you, like special run. Like you guys always all talk about that. Um, but then I feel like there were a few years, maybe not of like mediocrity, but maybe not just like winning as much as you guys would have wanted to. Um, and then this past year, you guys really turned it up. Like it was almost just like different. Like I would tell, like, cause I used to text you for a video and like we would talk or whatever. But like, I remember like texting you sometimes during this past season, you'd be like, nah, like I got a game in two days. Like I'm locked. Like, and I feel yeah. like it was just, like different. So at what, like, what was it that made the, sh the culture shift so much this year for USC? I, I think my, in my personal opinion, um, in my four year, we should go into the tournament three in a row, like boom, 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 almost all four. Yeah. But I would say the most talented team that like the foundation of like where USC come from was my, my freshman and sophomore year. So that, that was like most like team with the most camaraderie. And like, we had everything you needed. Like we had defense, we had shooting, we had big, we had everything. But, yeah. like, the most talented team was the, my junior year team with Kevin Porter and Benny Bowright and everybody like that. But we, we lost a lot of games because we weren't close to the team. Like, so, yeah. but this year's team, it, the will to win, and, like, we knew what it took after a couple of games. Like, we told ourselves we'll never lose three games in a row or never lose two games in a row again. Like, we can't. Yeah. We're always going to bounce back and become, like, we're going we're gonna to bounce back. So, like, I would say this year's team was, like, in more of, the culture changed like they the freshmen started to grow up and know like what it takes to win and like the seniors yeah. were already knew what it was about and everybody just came along so um i would say this the culture shock of the freshmen coming along so quick really helped yeah. us in the long run yeah um so going off of that um you coming into this year as you said like freshmen like you had a one and done last year kp and then now you had big o coming in like big expectations but like you were the senior and like you were a captain and you were captain your junior year but it was like your last run and like your last opportunity, I guess, to like make a tournament and like do what you wanted to do. So like, was there a moment in the preseason or for you at least, like where you were like, I'm, I need to be a leader. Like I need to step up and like, and lead this locker room. Yeah. I, I threw, I threw, we played uh, Marquette in Orlando. Um, we got beat by like 40 something. Marcus Howard went crazy on us. So like after that, I was like, okay, like, I'm not about to go out like this. Like, yeah, <laughs> after that, I just, I was just talking to Nick Q and Daniel. I was like, Hey, we're the seniors. Like me and Q are captains. Like, we got to turn this up if we, if we want to go out the way we want to go out. And, like, after that, we, like, buckled down. Like, I started really, like, getting focused on, like, little things, like, going early. Like, everything was just so – everything everything mattered at that point. Yeah. So, I think that's what really changed. Like, we had, oh, it was going to be a draft pick anyway. But the if the seniors weren't, like, in line, like, holding everybody accountable, then we wouldn't have been good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because this year really stood out to me because, like, I feel like you had Benny leave, like, you had KP leave, and, like – obviously you had like a bunch of like you had a few transfers Daniel and like you just had like it was just a new makeup so I thought that that was like really interesting how you guys kind of just like adopted it because I remember last year you guys were like pretty close off the court but this year it was just felt it was like different like I feel like the trip once a year our foreign tour really helped us like yeah. we played three games or whatever but like 
just being around different people like new people for two weeks you're gonna talk you're gonna be in this team was like more of like the everybody be together like type of team so like we always had that but this year was like the same like we expected or I expect at least everybody's gonna be clicky because nobody knew each other but when we got to Barcelona and like Khan and Paris like everybody was together and like we really grew in those games we played together so I think that trip to Europe actually really helped. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that trip because it seemed just like <laughs> like it was just lit. Um, I, I remember that picture of you like on the boat, like, like looking over. And it's just like, it's, I think that's a really like cool thing that you guys all literally didn't know each other. Like it was the middle of the summer, like, and you haven't even started practicing yet and you're just mobbing. And literally, in it was the greatest trip of all time. Like, we, <laughs> like before, we, like, I didn't really know Daniel and Quinn like that. Obviously, seniors have been hanging together. I knew Nick. That's my yeah. boys. They won, but like, I really – Q and Danny really grew on me in uh, in uh, Barcelona. We, we just, like, had fun. And, like, I was around him the whole time. Like, it's getting to know him. But that trip was – all everybody for playing that, honestly, that was the greatest trip. Like, I have to go back. I vowed I have to go back to Barcelona. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, that looked lit. I was, I was, I was really hyped up about that one. Um, so you mentioned Nick, and for those listening, Nick is like Jonah's best friend, right hand man. Like, I feel like I can't walk on campus without seeing like the two of you together. Like, whether it's like walking out of Annenberg or walking down Fig, like whatever it is, like you guys are just like attached. So both of you stayed four years. You had like later in your career, you had one and done start leaving. Like you had people on your team that you guys were like really, really, really close with that left. Um, but that was the one constant was you and Nick. So what has that friendship been like for you? And like, I mean, you guys, I mean, you scored a thousand points on the exact same night. Like it's like, you couldn't, you couldn't write it up any different. So what, right. what is the relationship with Nick meant to you? And like, how much do you think that helped you as a player and just like as a person at USC? Um, I've known Nick for like seven years. I knew like even before I got to SC, like we went to camps together. Like I've seen him at camps and through AAU circuit. Like I played him, they beat us by like 20, but like we played him in the EYBL circuit. We were there ranked like four we were in like five in the nation at the point, like, and we played in the BS like 20 on the main stage. And this is back when he had a jumper. I don't know where it's gone, but like, this is back when he could shoot. <laughs> <laughs> this is back when he could shoot, and he was shooting threes. He had like seven of them. I was like, okay, we got to know each other. But then when he committed, I like was the one that really was like, yo, like, come on, like, we need you. Like, he yeah. was the last one to come out of me, Harrison, D'Anthony, like, way later in like March and spring. And you're supposed mm -hmm. to commit like, usually like way back in fall for basketball. Yeah. I literally was like, yeah, like, come on, like, just come out here. you never been to Cali. Like, we need you to come play. Like, you'll, we'll make an impact. He signs literally the next day. So I'm like, all right, like, it's up. We get there June 25th. So, I have, a, I have like, 2016. He's my roommate. And from then, we just – it was like that. It was like clockwork. So, I think – and being he's my roommate for every trip. So, like, I could – we could talk about anything. Like, we can get on each other in the game. Like, we need to do this better. You need to do this better. And it will never be any – um there's never be anything to, anything bad between us because we're like best friends. Yeah, like I've noticed on the court, you guys are like the hardest on each other, not in like a bad way, but just like you know what to expect out of him and like he knows what to expect out of you. So like you guys yeah. definitely keep each other in check there. Thanks. Um, so obviously you get to USC, you spend four years there and you scored a thousand points your senior year. You, during that insane UCLA game, you got the three point record. So I guess when you stepped on campus and there were like all these great players, like on the team with you, you knew that USC was recruiting great guys. Like, did you ever think that you would accomplish like anything individually that you accomplished, like the thousand points of three pointers, like when you just stepped on campus? Um, honestly, after my first like five games at SC, I was like, wow, like, do I even want to play basketball anymore? I had like zero <laughs> points for five games in a row. And I was like, yeah. coming from high school, you're scoring like 30. You're like, this is what is happening. Like, where, where, what is going wrong here? So I was like, telling, I was just talking to mad people like J Mac and Chemezi. And they're like, just, just keep working. Like, hey, you're a freshman. It's going to come. So, like, yeah. my, this past summer, I really, like, put the pedal to the metal, like, like shooting, like, creating shots off the dribble, like, handling, like, getting like, my complete game. So, like, yeah, I could do what I want to do. And they're like, you're close. Like, when I first entered the season, I was, like, 170 and threes. Like, I was, like, eighth. And they were like, hey, like, you're close. But, like, you can get it if you really want to. So, I was like, okay. And then as we started winning – and it was like a breaking point, like I told you in the season. I was like, okay, we had to start leading. And then we got to Pac-12, and we started winning close games. In the Stanford game, we came back. Like, So I think at that point, I was like, okay, like, something, that's, something's destined to happen here. Like, this is not yeah. just all this facade. Yeah, I know. But, like, I know that you like to, like, you like to pass, and you're a playmaker, and, like, you're always looking for your teammates. But, like, the 1,000 points was just insane. Like, that, like, it's crazy. Yeah, like, it. I, like, didn't even know I was close. The one they told me, you're like, you're, like, at eight 
880. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> it's just weird because, like, over the years, just like, yeah, I already scored 800 points. Like, you don't even think it's that much. Yeah, exactly. It was just crazy. And, like, we scored, like, right after each other on the same basket, me and Nick. So, like, that's even more crazy. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and I feel like I was, I was, like, at all your games, obviously. Like, you were at all mine. And, like, I remember, like, I feel like every single time I looked up at the Jumbotron, like, you had just, like, broken some, like, record. Like, it's like, oh, Jonah's, like, this amount away from threes. Or, like, he's just scored, like, 999 points. Like, I literally feel like every single time I looked up, it was just, like, they were gassing you. And I was, like. I said, they keep, like, a, they do a really good job of, like, keeping those stats because I have, I have like, no idea. Like, I had no yeah. idea about any of that stuff. Like, I had no yeah. idea. When I hit it, I'd be, like, third. For, I was, like, okay, like, wow. Then after, like, when I get, like, when I got, like, 220, on the threes, I was okay. I'll, I'll just start keeping track now. Like, how many hit last game? One, two, three. I'm okay. Yeah. I, yeah. After that, I really kind of like, but the last game, before I played UCLA, like, CBS dudes were like, um, are you going to break the record tomorrow? I said, like, what if? I was like, no, no, there's no what if. Like, I'm getting it, but like, by Kobe standards, like, I'm getting it to be by hell or high water, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'll shoot yeah. 10 to 15. It's like, always going in. I'm shooting them. Yeah. I think it's interesting that you said that the night before the game because. Obviously, we know how that game went, but I just – that game was – so, basically, that that was, like, the whole atmosphere was insane. Like, that was when they had the football players out at halftime, like, mobbing with that uh, rapper. Like, it was it was insane. Like, the whole game, like, that was the most filled I had seen. I've been going to your games for three years. That was the most filled I've ever seen Galen Center in my life. Like, yeah. it was just crazy. And it was UCLA rivalry, like, the last game before Pac-12s. And then, sure enough, Jonah Matthews, the four-year senior, gets the ball in his hands with nine seconds left. You said, get out of my way. And you literally pulled a step back <laughs> and just <laughs> drained it. Like, how? What? I guess where, where I begin is, like, when you're coming down the court – because they had scored a free throw or something, right? And yeah, then I was, I was way happier that they, that they didn't miss a shot. Then it, I, I, I was like, please make the free throw so I can have time yeah. to, like, gather myself and know because I was studying their film, like, days before we played them last time. And they did the same thing when we played them at UCLA. It was, like, late – like a minute, 27 seconds left, we're up by like five. There's like the backbreaker in the game. They yeah. switch they switched one through five ball screens, which means like the five will to switch on you, which is a big man. Yeah. Quicker. So like they did the exact same thing at the end. And I was like, okay, like this is a workout shot. Went, he jumped. And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's it for you. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like a workout shot. People were like, how like, would it feel natural? I was like, that literally felt like I was doing like a pregame workout shot. Yeah. It was wild. Like but how, was, how it went in was weird. I thought it was gonna be like, like a toilet bowl, like bouncing. It was like, I don't know, it I just think. dropped. It was. <laughs> like I literally, because they didn't, because they hit that free throw and then there was no timeout. Like you literally just like so when the ball, when you had the ball, I know like Big O came off a screen or something and was open, but like when you had the ball, like and you were bringing it up with like nine seconds, like did you just know that you were shooting? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna make something happen, but like I was trying to go for the win. Like, I didn't want to go for a tie. I wanted to win. Like, I told Nick, like, get out, get out, because you clog it up right there. I swear I want to go. <laughs> I swear I want to go right there. <laughs> he let – sure, lo and behold, he cleared out, and that was literally the spot that I was going to shoot it from. I was like, yeah, I'm – well, Coach, infield before it even happened, he was like, yeah, like, you're going to – this is what's going to happen. You're going to take it, and you're going to do something with it. I don't know if you're going to shoot it, where you're going to – but you're going to make something happen. Like, it's on, it's on you. <laughs> I was all like – You're like, okay. Uh, I'm so happy he made that, though, because it was so, like, he made it. I got to like relax. It was nine seconds. I got it across in like four, so I had five to shoot. It was all perfect timing. Like insane. I was so I, that game. So I worked for the social media staff this year. Obviously, like you know that. And that game, I was sitting there. So basically, what I do is like people are filming the game, and then I grab their SD cards, and then I go make an edit like in the back media room, and like yeah. then I like I airdrop it to like the people who post for the account. And so, but like when there was like 15 minutes left in that game, we were like, nah, like I was like, I'm not, I was like, I'm not running to the back room to make an edit for this. Like, I was like, nope. Like, so I'm sitting there literally on the baseline, like watching with Gavin Morris, who's like the biggest like SC hype ever, like ever, ever. So the I'm, hype ever. Yeah, ever. So I'm literally sitting there watching with him. I was like, oh my gosh. And like, there's just like, it was literally just like a storybook. Like all these like recruits here, like football guys, like everybody, like the whole school, like it was nuts. And then literally, like, I think I was more nervous than you. Like, when you – but I low-key knew you were going to hit it, too. Like, I was like, oh, that's going in. Like, there was something in the air. Like, I was like, dude, yeah. this, is, this is like – I didn't break the record. Like, we didn't – this is not all for nothing. Like, something yeah. 
supposed to happen. <laughs> no, literally, like I remember, th- like when you when you put the shot up, I was like, oh, that's in. Like I was like, there's no way that like this day is too perfect. Like it's not gonna end with like a like a buzzer beater. Bad long. day, like that could that day couldn't end bad. No, like, that was the day. That was the one day that guy was like, no, 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 this day is not gonna end bad for them. Like this is their day. Like <laughs> it was <laughs> insane, and it was senior day. Like that whole vibe. Like obviously, like the cameras cut to your mom in the crowd, which like I love. Like that was sick. Like that was just a good. Like the funny part about that cutting was like, if you look like slowed down, my dad is like so serious, and my mom is like so like yeah, like my baby. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, he's supposed to do that. He's supposed to do that. I don't care. Like I was like yeah. You know, I asked him like, why you look so mad? He's like, you didn't win yet. You didn't win yet. I was like, what do you mean? I just made the shot to win. Like that. I was like, yo, you're you're wild. Like that was probably the funniest thing I've seen my parents in a while. Yeah, the well, so after the game, I remember I was like going home and I was like, God, this is, I was literally still just like, this is insane. Oh, and then my parents caught me. I was on camera after the game. I was running around trying to get a video of you for like my TikTok. <laughs> but I was like sprinting around the court like with the phone and CBS got it. But after the game, I remember you were like trending on Twitter because obviously it was like a huge thing. And I remember I saw like someone from like LA, I guess, like someone in like the LA basketball community because like your dad was a coach, right? Or is a coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So someone had tweeted like, "Damn, like look at how pissed Coach Matthews is right now, like because <laughs> his, his son didn't win the game." And it was literally a tweet. I was like dying. I was like, because then I watched it and I was Dude. like, yeah, "He's he's not happy." He was all like, "You didn't win yet." And I was all like, oh, "Whatever, I won." But then yeah. I watched and like when UCLA threw that like buzzer beater like half court whatever up. Yeah, I was like, "No, that's that's not." And then I looked at it. And I said, "Yeah, it's not going in. Game over." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> no, literally. So okay, so after that game. I remember I went up to you, I dapped you up, and you were like, all right, like, I'll hit you later, whatever. And then I left, and then I had work to do that night, so we didn't end up hanging out. But then coronavirus happened, and literally the whole world stopped. Like, that – you guys were – you had gone to the Pac- – so that was the last game of the regular season, and you had gone to the Pac-12 tournament, right? Yeah, they literally flew out, like, that Monday. We played – we were, like, at a bye. So we had to play Wednesday. We had a bye game, so we got there Monday practice, relaxed Tuesday. And that's when it hit, like, Tuesday night. We were like, yeah, like, we're not playing. So yeah. It's insane. So so then we were doing all these media interviews. Like, the crazy part is, like, that Monday we got there, like, me, Daniel, Q, Nick, O, and Coach Infield were doing, like, NSA March Madness videos, like, just for, yeah. like, propaganda and stuff like that. Yeah. So we were like, yeah, bro, I can't wait like, for the tournament next week. Like, it's going to be lit. Like, yeah. we're going to my March Madness next Tuesday. We are like, just talking about it. And, like, later that night, it was like, yeah, like, our shit is canceled. Like, we're not playing anymore. It's we're insane. like, no. So- we got, like, this canceled the packed over. Like, we're not going to cancel March Madness. Like, we can't. Yeah, yeah, because at that point it was like inconceivable. Like people were like, right. they're not gonna, they're not gonna cancel March Madness. Like, and I remember they were saying they were gonna do it like in person with no fans and stuff like that. But then they ended up canceling it. So, so wait, so but, but like when it happened, like were you guys all still together? Like were you just like yeah, we were literally all in the lobby? Oh my gosh. Yeah, like Daniel, I didn't feel bad for me because like I like I I know what March Madness tastes like. I've been a couple rounds. Yeah. Like, I know. Like Daniel and them like came here to go to the tournament. Cause, like that's why people transfer as graduates, mm-hmm. like go to a better situation and win. Yeah, and they, they're like on the brink and like they didn't get to happen. So I was more feeling bad for them, like the freshmen. Like they have a long time to go. Yeah, that's facts. Um, so so obviously now you're graduated and you USC to NBA is like a wave at this point. It's just like that's the culture. That's like how it's been going. So what has your NBA draft process kind of been like? recently um like just recently like i just signed with washerman so like agency and like uh, my brother's with them too like we have a whole bunch of good guys in our class like peyton pritchard tj Ellaby, trace tink all a lot of dudes from pac 12 some dudes from acc so like now I just like have a zoom call like they'll just text asian and agent text you like yeah they want to have a zoom call with you at this time but yeah. so it's like talk to, i've been talking to different teams and just like they fill you out and just they'll call back they want if they don't like it's just been like that because all we can do so far, we can't go practice other facilities or anything. So it's like literally the extent. Yeah. So your so your workout schedule, like the workouts and stuff, obviously that would have been ramped up right now, like without Corona. But what's the, like what's the schedule like? Like what? How much are you? How much time are you putting in? I uh, just me and my brother work out like Monday through Friday, but like basketball is only Tuesday and Thursday at five in the morning. So like because we it's the only time we can get like a gym to like a secret yeah. private gym that we can go yeah, to yeah, yeah. and just do it. So like it's the only time. But like otherwise we're just lifting, running. Do stuff like that on the weekends, we just chill and then right back to it. So. Yeah, yeah, because I was like, I filmed the NFL, I filmed like for a group of NFL prospect guys, like in January, February, and like then when Corona happened there, like it kind of just went virtual, I guess. And so it's like interesting to see that like the NBA hasn't skipped a beat, like it's just, it's right, 
yeah, they can still evaluate. Like, they still know what they're looking for. I feel like they're going to bring it back, though. What, the – NBA with no fans. Yeah, first. probably. Or I like, think so too. Like, or like different people, like different sections, because like arenas are big. Obviously, on the NBA theme, like you've played with and against a lot of NBA players, like through your career at USC, and like, like I think the family at USC is cool. How like everybody comes back for the games. Like I feel like I saw Benny more this year than I did last year. Like just seeing him like on the court, hanging out, whatever. Um, so who do you think like the best? player in college that you played with or against in the NBA right now like who's one of the guys that you've played against that like really blew your mind like you were like damn they're actually like they're they're up um Markel Fultz when I was a freshman we were both freshmen he was he averaged like 27 a game and he was literally like he put like 35 on us and it was just so it looked so easy yeah and then Lonzo Ball my freshman year was good but he wasn't good because he could like score he was good because he could like make everybody else better like he would draw and kick he averaged like 16, like eight assists a game. That's what made him good. Um, but also uh, here, like Kevin Porter was, yeah, not just like a unique talent. Like he, yeah. he could literally not stretch and come in and just hoop. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I'm saying, well, I'm like looking to see like when he gets his, when his mind right and like he really knows the game in the NBA and like he really taps in like a year or two. And yeah. It's gonna be like because once he knows the game in the NBA, he knows how to get by. Like this year, he was killing. He was only a rookie. Yeah, it was insane. Um, yeah, so when he gets when he gets his head and like people are gonna tell him like he can learn knowledge, it's gonna be it's gonna be insane. Yeah, I literally think that like on draft night too, he was a little slept on. Like I remember watching. Yeah. In, I remember watching in person last year. Like I remember when we shot the KT verse video. Like we hadn't, you guys hadn't played a game yet, and I was like asking you how the team was and stuff, and you said like Kevin was like a hooper. And then I remember I went to like the first game. I don't even know who it was against, like, one of those, like, little warm-up games at the beginning of the year. He was and going crazy. He was going crazy. Like, his mood – I agree what you said. Like, he's just, like, unique. Like, it's like I'd never seen, like – like, not – I'd never seen – it's not like I'm saying I'd never seen anyone as skilled as him. Like, it was just, like, the things he was doing were just, like so – it's, it's just so fluid. And, like, he's yeah. strong and like, athletic. Like, the game that stands me is Vanderbilt at home when he just had ran off, like, 13 in a row. Yeah. He had, like, three dunks and, like, a spin move and, like, a three. I was like, wow. Yeah, it's literally crazy. And then, like, also, you played against, like, Trey Young that one game. I remember that. Different. <laughs> he – there's no scout for that. Like, actually, oh. he's he's so quick. He can shoot from half court. You have to get up. And their offense at Oklahoma was, like, spread. Yeah. He really had downhill. He, he could do whatever he wanted. That was, the year that, that was the year that he was just pulling up from anywhere, too. <laughs> he averaged, like, 30 and 12 that year. I was like, this is insane. I, I, knew, I knew it was different when – he looked at the coach and he was like, "What you want to run?" Coach, he goes, "I don't know. You call something." I was like, oh, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh God!" You're like, "We're screwed." Like, 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 we literally call flat every time ball screen with like one four, and he can just go at us. Like, and that's what he did. It's insane. Like, I think people sleep. I mean, obviously that was an out of conference game, but I think people genuinely sleep on like the Pac-12 and like how good. Like, like every that. year there's every year there's probably what one to three top like round draft picks from the Pac-12. Yeah, like, we have like. A lot this year. Like, we have Nico Manny and all the dudes in Arizona. Yeah. Two dudes in Washington. Yeah. You have Big O. Again, Big O from here. It's like, insane. There's a, there's a lot of dudes. Yeah, so going off of that with Big O and Kevin, like, as a as a senior, or just, like, as an upperclassman, when you have a freshman come in that's, like, that's obviously, like, bound for greatness, like, they're all hyped up. Like, everybody's talking about them. Like, they're going to the NBA, whatever, um, after the season. Like, one and done, one and done, one and done. Like, is it ever tough as a leader or just like as a, as a two guard, like you're pretty involved in the offense. Like, did you ever struggle with like, I don't know, I guess neither of them really had egos, but what did you do to kind of like keep the freshmen, like realizing that like it was a team at points, if you ever they had never, like, to be honest, like they never got out of themselves. Like the first yeah. we were here, like they never put themselves above the team. They were the, if you're upper class, they, he like Kevin would ask me stuff about the game. I would ask me stuff about the game. And like, yeah. you just keep them level. Like, they're going to go through a game and they miss a couple shots in a row. The reason's going to get loud. Like, you just yeah. tell them, like, yo, relax. Like, it's another game. So, I, I would say, like, honestly, like, they never – I never had to deal with, like, dudes thinking their egos are there about the team. So, like, they're always bought in. I just never felt like that. But some dudes do. But I yeah. say, like, you can see they just, like, haven't been in it, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I think that's also the good part about, like, you guys being an upperclassman and, like, being so experienced. Like, you and Nick, like, you've been there. Like, you've seen it all. Like – like right. when you're playing Oregon on the road in November, your senior year, like it's not the first time that you've heard like Matthew Knight Arena going up. Like you know how to like, yeah, you know how to get above it. This year they're like number eight, and it was we came back and they hit like a deep three, and it was going 
crazy. And like, I want to like, why are you so calm? Like, I've been through it, bro. I've seen worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Even> worse. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I, yeah, that's the cool thing. And I think that's like why the the shot against UCLA was so like special is because it was literally just like the cul- it was the last play you'll ever take like, as a Trojan ever. Right. Like, it was literally right. just like the culmination of every single win loss experience, like session, like trip, whatever. Like, it was literally just like all of it in one moment. Right. And I feel like everyone knew that in the gym because everyone everyone at USC like knows how much you've put in and like how much you meant to the team. It felt like when I took that shot, like everybody's breath was just like <gasps> like this. It felt like quiet in there. Yeah. I like, I was like, like it froze. Like literally like the whole sh- I was like, yeah, this it's quiet in here right now. Why is it so quiet? Yeah, and well it, it was yeah, it was nuts. I was like, I realized how many people were in there at that time. I looked up like at the top, I was like, yeah. Everybody, like, this this is this is insane. It's insane, and like I, I mean, it's funny because there was CBS. Everybody was filming the game, all these cameras, and I get the best angle, of course. That was um, like, yeah, that video is like the best angle. <laughs> like literally coming down to the other side to the shot. I was like, yeah, that's insane. It's insane, and like, yeah, literally, and I have the whole play before too. But like, I just think it's crazy. Like, I watched the video over a couple of times, and like, it literally was silent, Jonah. Like, it was like wow. not a peep. Like, you go down, everyone's yelling, screaming, you take the shot. A, a second of just complete utter silence and then my phone just goes crazy like it was like it was like i heard nothing for a second it's so insane and you could hear literally heard a pen drop i was like what like i think everybody was like wondering like if i missed that shot people would have been like oh like you'd have heard of me like <laughs> oh like, i was like please i don't want to be that guy dude i did, I did oh, not God. i did not want to see you after that game if you lost because or if you missed that shot because, yeah, I I like strangled somebody like, because like man. being your friend and like knowing how you are like after the loss i might have gone off the grid for two months <laughs> oh, literally i don't think we'd be doing this podcast right now like I, <laughs> I literally remember like any any trip like you guys would take like and we're like friends and like i know we're hanging out after so like literally any trip you guys would take like i would just watch the games and be like oh my god like this is gonna dictate the mood for the rest of the weekend like depending on how this goes Bro, like if it, like literally we played like we play like Arizona State on like a Saturday or something. We fly back. We're like, okay, we tell them before the game. We're like, this is gonna dictate the whole mood for us the next week. We're gonna have a good week and have a bad week because we'll be at home the next week. So we're like, yeah. okay, we literally lost this fast. This I didn't talk to any. The bad, the bad, the next week was bad. <laughs> bad, everybody. Bad. Yeah. Well, actually, like one thing with you that I think is very interesting is like how during basketball and like even in school, like you're very go go go, like very all in, like you're really like where your feet are, but then you really do love to chill and like you find a you find the balance though like I feel like a lot of people are either one or the other like you would like go insanely hard at basketball and then like literally you and DT would like come over to my apartment and we would just like eat Postmates and like watch like family guy compilations like for hours like we like, we, like the the balance is like you like get your workout because your work is gonna make you like want to chill anyway yeah yeah like there's some nights you want to go out with your friends like we went out a lot like a team like we were like that as a team. We love to go out and have fun, like on weekends where we have days off, like yeah, like anybody. But I would say, like most throughout the most of the time, like me and DC had like a like a streak for like two months. We would literally work out, eat, and just watch like two movies in his room and just post. Yeah. Like he had this blue like chair, and yeah, I was just we were just lounging. Like we yeah. order like postmates like two times a day, and then we would literally lounge. Like that's when like the chill factor came in. Like I we love the ch- after Saturday practice like nine a.m. You're done like 11, back home by 12, that nap from like one to three. It's different. It's different. So like that's <laughs> really what you want to do. Wait, so obviously like a basketball team has like not that many people on it in comparison to like a lacrosse or a football or like even baseball. Um, how important do you think team chemistry is like chilling off the court? Like how important do you think it is for a team to vibe for overall success, especially in college when you guys are just around each other all the damn time? It's huge. Like, like our team, our junior year is probably the closest team I've ever been a part of. Like we can – that, and that's why, like, I, I'm I'm shocked that we didn't do better because we knew each other, keep people so close in and out. We were around each other all day. Yeah. Like, we have so many inside jokes that you have to just, like, know. Like, uh, if you're part of that team, you know. Like, we have group chat and snap called Run It Up. Like, it's just <laughs> – yeah. it's just – everything is in there, like, it's, you have to know. But that team was just so – we were just so connected. Like, even, like, Benny, even, like, when he hit and like, Jordan McLaughlin and Elijah left, like, from that team, like, he – stepped in it was close to us so like I think it's super important because like that's how you like figure out how to get better and like how to talk to people and, like you can deal with people on different levels because you know them so well yeah and then one thing like 
now obviously corona everything like people aren't around their teams people aren't around their teammates like what is one thing I guess because you're going through it right now but what is one thing you would you would tell like a young hooper right now that they might want to hear during coronavirus don't um don't take the the inside gym for granted (laughs) (laughs) like we were just showing up like well we had to practice we had to work out like this is regular we should get this we deserve this but like really like we don't deserve anything that's what corona is telling us like yeah we don't like just take advantage of like every time you can go like lift inside or like have the easy access to the gym like yeah like go people like oh how do you not go insane after like just playing basketball for like a month like you know like you go insane after yeah. playing for every day yeah like even with any sport like when you're in season like if you just abruptly stop lacrosse like because of corona you'd be like okay like I, i'm phoenix like touch like a lacrosse or something or yeah you something. go insane so like yeah. i'll just um every day just counts like every day we can work out just take advantage of all that yeah for sure um all right, so there's a segment we do to close out the podcast on Connect with KT, and it's called Braveheart. So basically, Braveheart and lacrosse is when a game is tied, and at the end, they do they put one player out from each team and the goalie, and they do a draw, and then whoever wins it basically goes and scores. So it's very high stakes. So I'm going to say something, and you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Favorite memory with me? Uh, at the lab before the volleyball game. <laughs> that was one. F- funniest teammate at USC ever. <laughs> um, Jordan Usher. Favorite moment as a USC basketball player. Ooh, making a selection Sunday my freshman year. Kerrigan Miller. Super dope. Travis Scott. <laughs> the best rapper out. <laughs> <laughs> Alive. Katie DeFeo. The dopest person you ever meet at USC. Besides, Los, your- besides, oh yeah, facts, facts. Los Angeles, California. Oh, it's a place to live. Figueroa, Figueroa Avenue. <laughs> if you don't live on Fig, you're not living. The Shrine Apartments. Go, goaded. goaded. <laughs> facts. Goated. And the last one is Nick Rakosovic. <laughs> <laughs> USC legend, unicorn, <laughs> one of a kind. Mr. JMC. <laughs> Mr. JMC, Mr. Galen, Mr. Oh Mayor of LA. <laughs> Jonah, thank you very much for coming on today. Really appreciate having you. You've been a great role model, a great friend, a great supporter of the of the channel, of me in general, and we we really appreciate you coming on today. I appreciate you for having me on and putting me on these past three years to so many different things and different people and different friends. Like I truly appreciate the support too. Absolutely, buddy. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs>